So we welcome you today, Erica, to our church, and we're very thankful that you're prepared the word and willing to come to fill in for us, for Stephen. We're excited to hear from you. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I don't know if everybody knows you okay. before you come. Yeah, I think I can do that. Thank you. Oh, no, you're not. I'm sure you'll hear me. I've got a big mouth, so you'll be all right. <coughs> well, good morning. It's a privilege to be here. And I know some of you know me and some don't. Um, I'm Erica Tuxworth. I noticed in your bulletin that I am Tuxworthy. I don't know what I'm worthy of. <laughs> and I don't know that I want to live up to that this morning. But, you know, I'm Erica Tuxworth. And um, I have been a pastor on the district down in Watford for 20 years. I retired two or three years ago, three years ago now, actually. Um, and moved back up here because back up to Lee, just outside Bolton, uh, where my all my family live now. I've got four children, and I've got six grandchildren and another one on the way. So I'm quite busy with family, and they all live, except for one. One of my daughters lives in Sheffield, but the others all live ten minutes from me, which is kind of why I moved up, but I didn't realise it would be quite as much as it is. They all seem to know where, my, where I am and where my house is and where my phone is and, and ask for quite a bit, but that's great. Um, I attend Bolton South End Street, um, Church of the Nazarene, where I left from there when I went down to Watford. So I've kind of gone full circle back. Always said I wouldn't, but I have. I found myself back there. Um, I currently hold a role on the district. I'm on the district advisory board and I hold a role of district chaplain. So I kind of support and look after the pastors and their households as best I can on the district. So you can imagine I have a lot of spare time. Um, I feel busier now than ever when I worked or when I was in, in, in church leadership ministry, um, but it's great. God hasn't finished with me yet. I go around preaching all over the place. Um, the pastor at Bolton will say, so where are you this Sunday? And are you with us at all this month? Yes, I'm coming up. I've got two, the next two Sundays, I'm at home. I've got two Sundays off to sit and be fed. But here I am um, ministering to you this morning, I hope, with what God's laid on my heart. Um, and from what I've seen already in the service, I feel that it is a word directly from God because I don't know you. I don't know all your issues. I don't know your background. I don't know what you're struggling with. But God laid this on my heart because I felt it was right for this morning so it's a privilege to be here and um, I trust that you, it'll be less of me and more of God as we look at his word let's pray father we ask now that as we come to your word that you will clear all the distractions from our minds may we not be thinking about what we're having for dinner later on or who we're going to see this afternoon but may we be focused on you open our ears to hear you our minds to understand you, and our hearts to respond to you. Bless this your word to your people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we had that reading from Philippians twice, once in Romanian and once in English. I want to read it again, but from the message. Sometimes, I don't use the message a lot, but sometimes it just uses slightly different words that can bring it more relevant or more to life. So let's just hear those verses again from the message. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your mind and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, 
things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Something beautiful about that. Just a few changes in words and it brings it to life. Hmm. Now I know that all of us here have got this perfect life, no problems, no issues, no struggles, nothing that we're worried about. We're all absolutely sorted, yeah? No, not at all, none of us. And let me tell you this, when things happen to you, I know that the first thing you do when that thing comes, you say, thank you, Lord, that's just what I want. I'm going to rejoice in that, yeah? No, we don't, do we? We say, Lord, where are you? What's going on? What's happening? Our situation feels hopeless, but let's rejoice and celebrate it. We're captive to the influences in our lives. Alcohol, drugs, sex, work, broken family, broken relationships, all those things that hold us captive, and we rejoice and celebrate in them. We have no hope for the future, no job. We're in financial difficulty, no qualifications. We don't know where we're going to turn, but we rejoice and celebrate. Maybe not. So how easy is this? Well, I don't think it's easy at all. And if that's what we do in all of these situations, then we will get some comfort, some peace, but it won't, as Phil said to the children, it doesn't always take away your problem. However, the answer for all of our problems is right here in the Word of God. He has the answer. And if in many of our situations, in many of our circumstances, it isn't what happens to us. It's how we react to it. It isn't what happens. Life will happen. Whether you're a Christian or not, life will come and hit you in the face. But as Christians and as people that are wanting to live a, a better life and wanting that peace that only God can give, it's how we react that matters. I want to give us three little hints quickly of what we need to do. The first thing I would say is right praying. Now, I know if we're all really, really honest, the first thing that we forget to do is pray. Not all of us, I'm generalizing, but a lot of us will forget to pray. We skip stage one. We know that life is difficult. We've got all this ahead of us. And we want to fix it. We want to be the ones in control of it. We want to fix it for ourselves. So we forget to pray. But there's right praying. And several places, we've read it this morning in Philippians and in James, it says not to worry about anything. But by prayer, give your concerns and your worries to God came across a great quote and I've, I've promised myself I'm going to print it off and stick it up somewhere in my, in my house. It says this, worrying is wasting today's time, cluttering up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Let me say that again. You have to think about it. Okay, Stay with me. Worrying is wasting today's time cluttering up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. You see, worrying doesn't really do anything, does it, other than make you feel rubbish. And Paul is telling us here to use our energy in a more productive way. Don't spend all night lying awake worrying. Sleep and refresh your body and rest. The next day, you'll be able to be more productive in how you deal with those problems. Pray passionately about all the things that might concern you. When you feel that worrying feeling creeping up, that anxiety starting to get hold of you, stop 
green and fresh. So I want to ask you this morning, are you a prayer warrior or are you a prayer worrier? Are you a prayer warrior or are you a prayer worrier? You know when your knees start knocking because you're anxious and you're worried and you're nervous, the best thing to do is kneel on them and pray. That will stop the knocking and you'll be able to pray. We need to intentionally give all of our situations and all of our concerns to God. Cast all your cares on me, for I will give you rest. Give them to him, trusting that he has the answer. You see, so often we pray, don't we, when we feel we've no other option. Lots of people that I've come across in my uh, ministry that are not believers when things are really difficult, even though they say they don't believe in God, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in anything, they'll say, please pray for me. God, help me. They cry out to God when things are difficult. And often we only do that when we've tried everything else ourselves and we've said, well, well that's not worked and this hasn't worked and I don't know where to turn you know what you might just pray about it then when we do often always something happens maybe not in our time and what, how we want it to be but God will answer prayer needs to be our first option and our every time option when things are difficult and God gives us a great promise in his word. He says, for those who pray, they will receive a peace from God that the ordinary person can't understand. And they, this will keep their hearts and minds in line with God. Now, when I'm talking about peace, I'm not talking about well, it's all gone away and, hey, life is great. No, we still have to work through those issues. But we have a peace deep down that the person that doesn't believe and doesn't pray will never understand because he gives us confidence that he is going to fix it. So we can do two things. We can try to understand what is going on in our lives. And if I tried to do that in my life, I would be rocking somewhere I can't understand a lot of what's happened in my life but what I can do is claim God's peace by praying by serving by worshipping by reading his word by giving him the troubles and the problems so that my burden is light because he's carrying it if we allow him to, he will guard and protect our hearts and our minds. You think of Daniel in the Old Testament. He wasn't ashamed or embarrassed to pray. He was a prayer warrior. He'd pray and interpret dreams for the king. And when the others mocked him, it didn't affect him. He carried on. He carried on praying. Now, he could have kept himself out of lots of trouble by stopping praying. But he didn't. He knew that he could be arrested because he kept praying. But nevertheless, he carried on. He found himself in a lion's den. And I guess snuggling up in a lion's mane on a morning like this was quite comfortable. Daniel slept soundly. But the king didn't. The king didn't sleep. The king was worried about what had happened, what he was doing, what the decisions he'd made. But Daniel, because he gave it all to God, slept like a baby and was saved from the lion's den. So we need to do right praying. Pray believing that God... How many times do we do half-hearted prayers? Well, if you're there, God, well, I'll ask, but I don't believe that you're going to do this. Pray believing that God hears you, because he does, and he will answer you. 
The second thing is right thinking. We need to think about the right things. We need to stop playing the what if game. How many of us have ever played the what if game? God says, I want you to do that. I want you to read in this service and they say, but what if it's raining and I can't get there? What if I've lost my voice? What if I can't read and I can't see the words on the page? Why don't you ask someone else? I want you to serve me. But I can't do that, Lord. What if? What if? What if? Excuses, excuses. And we need to change our negative imagination and keep our every thought obedient to God. We also read this morning Psalm 42. And David, the psalmist here, he's applying his faith and he's reasoning even though he had many, many moments of doubt. And here he's talking to himself, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Where are you, God? How many times have we asked that question? Where are you, God, in this? I've had a few times where I've said, not something else, not again, God is there in the midst of our storms. We've been singing about this morning. In the midst of our storms of life, God is there. And we just need to reach out to him. There was a, some statistics I looked up on a, a worry meter. And it tells us how many, how many percentage of the things we worry about what that percentage is okay so we all worry about something at some point the things that never happen that we worry about is about 40 percent of our worries things that can't be changed so we're worrying about something and it's pointless because it's not going to change 35 percent things that turn out better 15 percent turn out better because we've worried about them. Pretty insignificant fretting, 8%. And legitimate cause for concern, 2%. So of all those things that we lie awake worrying about and trying to work out and fix, only 2% of those are legitimate causes con for, of concern because we just can't change something on our own in our own strength we can't make it happen but God can all things are possible through him who gives us strength so we've got the right praying and we've got the right living and right thinking I wonder what do we think about when we leave this service today and we go on with the rest of our day and into this new week, what are we thinking about? Are we thinking about God? Are we thinking about the thing that might worry you on that Monday morning blues feeling? Oh, it's Monday again. What are we thinking about? Are we saying to God, right, God, this is a new week, a new opportunity. I'm going to do all I can for you. Or, um, that's okay, I've got, I've got something out of that service for singing on, on Sunday and I'll wait now for next week, see what next week brings us. I wonder what we're thinking. But when we think positively about God in our lives, then all the things that happen to us will work together. But it's how we react to them that really matters and makes a difference. If you have a friend at work or a neighbour or a family member and they see you going through something difficult, what is the witness they're looking for? It's how you react to that difficulty. And there's many people around that we would say, how do you keep doing it? How do you keep going? And you say, well, God is there. Because it's in God's strength we do it, not in our own. 
think if it was all left to us, we'd probably all stay in bed, have a duvet day as they call it, and stay in bed and not bother, not face the world because it's too difficult. But here we are, whether it's health or jobs or money or relationships, whatever it is that's our problem this morning, we're here. And as Katie said right at the beginning of the service, we are so glad you're here. God is glad you're here. Where else should you be? Nowhere. You should be here. Because God is here. And when you leave this place, God will go with you. So let's think positively and let's pray constructively for leaving. And the third thing is right living. So if we pray correctly and we think correctly, then by the grace of God, we will live correctly. Put all that you've seen, heard and learned from God into practice and you will be living the right way. Now that's really, really simple, isn't it? Straight to the point. Don't need to say anything else. Just do what you're told. What's the matter? Now, I have lots of grandchildren, and um, I don't think they all do what they're told most of the time. Because at two and a half, you know everything, don't you? And at nine, nearly ten. And whoa, at 13, wow. Even the prime minister is not worthy because the 13 year old knows it all. We all think we know everything, but when we put the things of God into practice, it changes it, and then we live the right way. There's a very close link between thinking and acting. I don't mean pretending, I mean actions. God tells us in Isaiah 57 that there is no peace for the wicked, the unbeliever. But for the Christian, the believer, they have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say that? That peace deep down that you don't understand why you feel like that. Why do I feel like this? But it's because God, the, by the Holy Spirit, is in you and he's supporting you and he's lifting you up. So I want to ask you two questions. Where are you this morning? Are you one that skips stage one and forgets to pray until you've no other option? Are you filled with negative thoughts and everything's always doom and gloom? Or are you someone that knows and believes and has experienced the peace of God that passes all understanding? Now that doesn't mean you'll never have another problem because I promise you, you won't. There'll be lots. There's always something in our lives. But remember, it's how do we react to that that makes a difference. So do you have that peace this morning? Would you like that peace this morning? Maybe your life feels like you're in turmoil today. I don't know. That's the beauty of going preaching places where you don't know because you don't know who might be sat really in turmoil, struggling. But God knows. And if you're that person this morning and you want that peace, and you want some extra strength and help to get through your difficulties, then God is the answer. To have the peace of God, you need to have peace with God. It's not just something you grasp from the sky and put in your pocket. It's a relationship with God that 
gives you the peace. If you're still resisting him this morning, fighting him, not giving him all that you should, wanting to sort it out yourself, then the peace cannot be realized. But if you're willing to open yourself up and say, God, help me. Help me have that peace in my life. Then it's here just for the asking this morning. I want to finish with just a little reading to you. Four lines. I want you to think about it. All the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never, never sink a ship unless it got inside. All the hardships of this world might wear you pretty thin, but they won't hurt you one little bit unless you let them in. And if you ask for God's protection, God's wisdom, God's love in your life, then your problems won't go away but they'll be easier to deal with and you'll react differently to them. So I come to you. Where are you this morning? Do you have that peace? Do you want that peace or want more of that peace? Maybe you have a little bit and you want a bit more. Are you in turmoil today? Whatever your circumstance this morning, come to God. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. I trust that you'll continue to let God speak to you. I believe the Holy Spirit's here. I believe that he is speaking. And I would urge you with all of my heart, don't miss an opportunity of connecting with God and doing business with him. If that is what you need to do this morning, then do it. Don't leave without. All the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never, never sink a ship unless it got inside. All the hardships of this world might wear you pretty thin, but they won't hurt you one little bit unless you let them in. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we thank you that you are here this morning. <coughs> and we ask, Lord, now that you'll help us to search our hearts, think about our own situations. May we come to you knowing that you are a God who loves us unconditionally and you are the one who will help us through all the troubles of the world in our lives. Father, we pray this morning that you'll help us come to you first and every time, that you'll help us think positively about your place in our lives and you'll help us to live the right way that brings glory to you witness to our friends and our families and our neighbors and our work colleagues and may they ask us how do we react why do you react like that because God is so good we give you the praise this morning in Jesus name <coughs>